Hello, everybody. This is the Jenkins Pipeline Authoring SIG meeting for February 21st, 2020. This is the U.S. Uh, meeting. And my name is Marky, and we are going to get started with this meeting. I usually try to think of a better way to do that intro, <laughs> like something really cool, and I wound up signing stupid stuff. So. I apologize for we're anybody going to start. watching. Yeah, we're we'll going to start. some 3D animation. Yeah. Wow, with some sound effects. Fireworks going all over. Uh, in the uh, Gitter chat, the link to the notes has been posted. I will drop a lazy link here in this Zoom chat. If you could just add your name to the attendees list, that would be awesome. The link has been posted. And can I get a note taker? I think Liam, you are always the note taker. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm, and, or at least I'm, I'm, I'm going about already. I'm already going about sharing my screen and doing that. So beautiful. I also want to say something that I do. We do this in another community, and I'd like to start doing it here. And that's just remind everybody about the code of conduct that Jenkins has. And really what it amounts to is just being nice to one another. And I think we largely all do that, so that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. All right, I have added in the entry for today's notes. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started with the first discussion topic that I've added. Uh, due to overwhelming demand for a more EU friendly time, we've created a second meeting. This meeting will start Thursday, the 27th of February, and that will be at 6 a.m. PST. I added in a time converter there, so if anybody needs to convert their times. And uh, largely, I think that meeting format will follow uh, this meeting format, but I think what we will do is I will feed, since that meeting starts on uh, Thursday, and ours is a Friday, I will feed the following Friday's work items into that meeting. And then anything we've come out of that, I will feed that into our next day's meeting. So we kind of keep a good flow in between meetings and there's not separate sort of work streams. Any questions about that? Awesome. Uh, We'll go into the open items. Last we spoke, we talked about personas and boiling those personas down. Has anybody had a chance to work on that anymore? I personally have not. Uh, so uh, I'll uh, summarize uh, a little bit from the uh, from last time, if I can get this. To, there we go. Um, after you left, there was some discussion. Why is it keep asking that? Whatever. Um, around this and we, uh, we didn't boil them down so much as sort of get to, uh, we added one more, um, and the, so we have these, uh, basically the, mm, sorry, I'll get my talking cap on. We had three, uh, topped out by David who, Stephen sort of created at uh, describing himself for the most part. Um, and I felt like there needed to be one more um, before you got to David level of someone who is a uh, n not ops, um, but wants to use Jenkins like any other development tool um, and comes and is coming into the Jenkins community. They're maybe new-ish depending um, and they this is a, a persona that I definitely see a lot of, and I think is underserved in, in the pipeline tooling and pipeline documentation and all these things, uh, is someone who, is, who wants to treat uh, Jenkins pipeline as a, an environment that they develop, you know, that they write code in. And uh, so as you can see here, they're, they're coming at this as a, hey, where's where, you know, this Jenkins is a mature, uh, Jenkins and Jenkins pipeline is a mature technology. Where's my IDE? Where's my testing? Where's my import and using external libraries and all these other things that they they're coming at pipeline as as code, uh, which is both great and and also not great in that like it goes against some of the the, the guidance that we have of hey you, pipeline is 
you know, the glue, not, not a, a full fledged development environment. And so, uh, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't have something that makes the, we shouldn't have the tools to make what people do do in pipeline work well. And that's, you know, that's what this, this persona is about. Okay, that makes sense. I think I was there when we were doing that one, and I think we all agreed that that was a good one. It was that there was, well, you were there when we created, we didn't, we sort of went on talking about it a little after you had to d dive out last time of, of kind of fleshing out what that persona is. Um, yeah. So in previous meetings, we also discussed matching these personas uh, to the maturity model and then linking to the documentation. That is still an action item that's open, and that right. is still on my plate. So what do we get out of linking them to the, to the maturity model? Because, I mean, it's looking at this last time, and they sort of, the way that we've li lined them up, they, they sort of roughly um, appear in, you know, the same columns more slightly, or, you know, or with some crossover, you know, one to two is, is on one side, and then this sort of like a on either side of that column sort of thing. Yeah, my um, thinking. My thinking. What, we, what are you looking at, looking for getting out of that? I was the the reason that I was thinking of linking personas to the maturity model is then we could link those to the documentation, and the idea there is which to figure sorry, which the, which documentation the the Jenkins sort sort of just the Jenkins overall documentation for various parts, and uh, like various parts, just like like how do I run a how do I start a pipeline. I am this persona, where is the documentation to guide me? Mm. And I think one of our earlier meetings, and this is when Mark, uh, Mark White was on. Hello, Mark. Uh, he's not here. But uh, one of our earlier meetings, we talked about the lack of documentation mm. in, in authoring a pipeline. And really what we want, I think before we can start to write any tooling around anything, we have to understand what documentation is out there and where that falls in the personas. Now that was just something we talked about. Yeah, I think there's two separate concerns, right? There's one concern that the documentation by itself should could be organized maybe a little bit uh, more intuitively to be able to find the different topics that you're looking for. And then there's what we're talking about here, which is I don't know that we need to functionally categorize the documentation according to persona, but we could have a landing page that describes these personas and then like uh, elevates different pieces of the documentation to that landing zone so that someone can see themselves in a persona and find the docs. Right. Yeah, but I, I don't I know personally if we want to like organize it per persona, but we want to have a place where you can find topics on a page that correspond to what you're probably concerned about that link to the more intuitively uh, organized documentation. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. But so the, but I'm not sure how the maturity model maps into that. Cause I can see the personas like that's, that's directly like here, here's this person we're, we're serving that person. The, the maturity model, does that help us? Well, I'd imagine it might be something like uh, when I you mean, go, like for, have you seen like pandas documentation, for example, they kind of split, split it up into like, here's the beginner stuff. And then here's sort of like the intermediary user guide stuff. And then here's the advanced API reference with all the details. Sure. And it might be sort of, that might, that might overlap a little bit with maturity model of like, you know, once you're a fully mature thing, you're only using this as a reference documentation. Whereas earlier on, you might be using this as an actual uh, guide on how okay. to do things. Yeah, I see it as a bridge. Uh, so when I come in, and I know nothing about Jenkins, it's nice to be able to look at a list of personas and say, oh, that's me. And then that maturity model links you to where your ladder is, right? To be, to be considered, let's say, an expert. And I'm using that term lightly. But to know how to get from one to the other, you need to know what those others are. And that's where that maturity model goes and that ties in with the persona. So if I could, just to give you like a 30,000 foot view, if I come into Jenkins and I want to do A, I need to know what A is or where I fit in A. So you look at the personas and you say, oh, yeah. I'm, a new, I'm a newbie. And then, okay, I'm gonna go, and all this documentation is now shows what newbies should be looking at. And then you see, once you've got this, 
you really move over to this persona now. And that persona is this maturity model. And you're sort of seeing how this gap or, or uh, this bridge moves you up the ladder. Okay. And that's, yeah, that's so what I, think, I was uh, So I think that there's, there's a good idea of having like a what's next section, <clears throat> but the phrase maturity model, I feel like that could rub, rub someone the wrong way because not every Jenkins user is going to need to be an expert. So it'd be interesting if under the persona there was a like things to look at next and then figuring out how we can have some criteria for when you actually need to go to that next level of maturity, right? If someone starts out learning Jenkins and then need to write a pipeline for like one application, one team, uh, the documentation or, or tips that we're describing in our power user expert documentation is probably way more than they need, right? So being able to quantify how to avoid premature optimization and at what point of, of scale do you need to start being concerned about things like shared libraries or what have you. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I think what I want to do, like what I – I'm looking at this from a different lens and I'm looking at it from the lens of the support questions we get in Getter. And what I would love to be able to do is when a person's asking questions, the answer that I give them, I would love it to be dependent upon their maturity level in the ecosystem or I guess probably the best phrase to use. And so if somebody's saying, I need to understand how to write a shared library, and then I could say, okay, here's what we, how we do it. Here's sort of our map and you fall in here. And then because you fall in here, this is the maturity model. Here's the links to the documentation. Go read that. And if you still find your stuff, come back to us. Did I, does that make sense? I know it sounds off-putting by saying, go read something. And if you're smart enough, you'll figure it out. And if you're not, you'll come back and ask us a dumb question. That's not how I mean it, but I know it comes <laughs> off like that. And I don't mean it that way. Well, I'm, I'm open to, to I mean, I, I guess what, you're, what I'm taking from what you're saying is that this is a, another pathway through the, an, another way to, to find what kind of documentation you'd be looking for. Like, so on one end, you have the personas, and then on another one, you have a maturity model. And they're both ways of people finding their way to the kind of documentation that they need. Yes. Okay. So, so we, like, I think, yeah. I'm in another just community. Like, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say that like, being able to ask the question, I want to learn about shared libraries, has an inherent assumption that the person already knows that shared libraries are a thing. Right. So I, it might be interesting to talk about it from a use cases perspective. Like I want to be able to share code between pipelines, right? And then personas and use cases are gonna be pretty similar in their goals, right? It, different people are gonna have different scenarios that they're trying to solve for. If we can organize the documentation around like uh, those use cases that those personas might run into, because it's sort of like if you're a junior software engineer, the problem is not that you can't learn it, it's that you don't know what words to Google to find the resources that you're looking for. So how can we elevate these topics without people having to know that they already exist? This sounds a lot like right, um, we have, one of those X, Y problems where you have the problem X, but you're asking how do I solve Y, but people don't know that your original problem is X. And in, in this case, X is the use case scenarios we can kind of show. And the Y might be when someone comes in and says, hey, how do I, uh, you know, how do I do this thing that sounds like a bad idea? But, you know, it's like, hold on, step back a second and see where you're coming from and figuring out, are, like you're saying, are you asking the right questions um, or even looking in the right area without knowing um, based on your own maturity level here of the product? I will say that no matter, I, I will say this, and this is the cynical side of me, no matter which way we come up, someone's always going to complain that it's wrong. Oh yeah. Well, it's, al it's always going to be less than, I less than there's always any space for improvement, but yeah, um, the, it, it, it's, it's one of those, 
you still have to do it, right? Exactly. Right. So okay. I'm game with I'm game with coming up with anything. And maybe if we just start with one small piece of it, getting it out there and letting people chew on it and see okay. what they think of it, maybe we we're able to iterate faster. I don't know. That's just a suggestion. Okay. So like, what do you, what do you think? Uh, what are you thinking of? Do you have something in mind? Maybe we start with like the beginner persona. Okay. Which I think we, what the, we call the utilitarian. It? Yeah. And maybe um, we just start seeing like, you know, uh, maybe when people are asking questions general in, in the Jenkins getter, we could start to just use that and try it out. Kick the tires. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think if we come up with some of the, the questions that these different people are going to ask, that can expose either documentation updates that could happen to make finding those resources more readily available, or it can introduce like feature ideas that maybe we need to think about so that this problem isn't introduced in the first place. Right. That's what I'm thinking. I more want to get the rubber to meet the road. I'm all good with like phrases yeah. today. Right, like if I'm a beginner, my first question is, so what is what is Jenkins? Right, so glorified cron job task runner. That's uh, how do I one. get? <laughs> um, I don't know. I'd like I, I think it'd be interesting to to figure out the types of questions we think these people are going to be asking, and then use those questions to guide our decisions around whether it's a documentation problem or whether it's a opportunity to improve the developer experience of writing pipeline. I think one of the first questions that I always seem to get is, I want to run Jenkins locally. How do I do that? And there is documentation out there. However, it's not so great when it says, I'm on a Mac, how do I do that? Or I'm running Linux, how do I do that? Or no offense, I'm running Windows, and how do I do that? <laughs> no offense. <laughs> So, and uh, 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 Liam, are you using Windows right now? No, I just, I'm laughing at the, <laughs> no offense, like, what? Uh, so I, I, I get that question quite often. And usually what happens is, is they think they are the beginner in personas, but really they've used Jenkins before, but they just don't, they're not, like you said, they're, they're, they, they want to ask about X, but they're asking about Y. So maybe I now so we start to get into like the stickier side of things, which is, does the community have a preferred way to do this locally? Is our preferred option you say Docker run Jenkins, do some port forwarding and have your local Jenkins instance, or are we recommending that people do Java Jar or Java and you know, you I have spin found it up from that, the war. I have found that multiple people I've been dealing with, like I'll say, of the last three months, and and if I say twenty people over 15 of them have been using brew. Sure. Why wouldn't they? Yeah, I mean, it's especially, it's just it's okay. super easy. But see, then, so then they run now, like brew install Jenkins and then they start it up. Yep, yeah, and they, they may just go, they're off yeah, to the races. Yeah, and that's just a Java dash jar wrapper. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There you go. Uh, so maybe we just do choose a, choose one persona and just start throwing it out there. And maybe I guess maybe the next big question becomes when we throw it out there, what are we looking to do with it? I feel like right now we're trying to figure out what our backlog is, hmm. right? Like we, we know that there's opportunities to improve developer experience in Jenkins, but we're still in the early phase of figuring out what does that actually mean? So I think this exercise is trying to populate our backlog of groups of topics we want to be able to address. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think that what I would add to that though is what do, what is the next step? After we've populated as much as we can, we can do, what do we want to do next? Well, that's the hard part. Right now, we yeah. just can, you know, meet on a weekly basis and talk about things. And 
have some good conversation. And then the next part is we need to start uh, figuring out action items and seeing how we can fix things. Any thoughts around what that may look like? It's a really hard question to answer because of the open source model of it's based upon like people's availability to contribute outside of their, you know, typical responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> uh, trying to think of maybe a good way. See, and then I think another problem that we face, and this is a problem, like when I'm saying about, you know, let's get a persona out there and start seeing how it works. I think one of the problems in doing that is then we run into a rabbit hole. Right, we're going to start going off of this one persona, and it's you know it, that could go on forever. What I don't want to do is turn all of this work into really we're trying to format for help desk. Better ways to deal with get, get or help desk issues. Yeah, I, I think that the most important thing we can do is try to capture these action items and display them publicly. Mm. Right, if everything we come up with in this meeting is going to be uh, reliant upon the people that join the meeting to implement, I think it's going to take a very long time. But if we can find a way to elevate this and label things like good for newcomers to write docs or just try to expose our backlog to the wider community and see where we can get help. Mm. Yeah. So Agreed. maybe an option item there is to get, I can get it. Someone, one of us, I don't want to take all the action. <laughs> don't well, have all the fun. Yeah. Right. Uh, maybe we can get an email together to get out to the, the dev. A call for questions, time. even you know, this could be yeah. like, a, "Hey, here's a here's your free opportunity to get a, to ask a question." Uh, you know, maybe not say whether or not it gets answered, but <laughs> <laughs> you can definitely get a lot of good questions to to um, get some raw data to help um, maybe extract some good um, clustering points or something categories, you might say. Yeah. One of the things I, uh, I'm really worried about, I'd be very upfront and with this, putting out a call for help and, and doing that, there are a cluster of people that just expect us to do everything. They don't want to contribute. They expect, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of the right way to say this without sounding super negative. They will complain about everything, but they will do nothing to fix anything. Well, and that's going to be true. Yeah, that's that's going to be true no matter what. Um, there's always that group of people where they're they're fine to say to, to report a bug, and then you're like, "Cool, when are you going to fix that?" And they're like, "What are you talking about?" Um, so, what are you going to do? Um, yeah. Uh, I I don't. I mean, I guess it's it's. I agree it's a good idea to uh, be upfront and address that, but I'd, I'd rather not assume, okay. focus nor assume it, right? The, it's, it's a numbers game. There, there will be people that will contribute and you have to, I think we just have to sort of go, okay, here's what needs to happen. And we, over time, either, either it will be something that gains traction with people and they'll be interested in doing it or they won't. Yeah. Know? So maybe what we can do is just get an email out to the dev mailing list and our SIG mailing list saying what we've done for this month or thus far, but maybe we get like, an, we make that a monthly cadence where we send out an email and say what we're working on. And then somebody may read that and say, Oh, I'd like to do oh, yeah, right. like that. Yeah. You know, and I'm then they decide to join. Yeah. As a sidebar, is there like a SIG of SIGs, kind of like a scrum of scrums? Like how, how do we track if any of this work is already being addressed by like the documentation SIG or one of the other sub communities within Jenkins? Uh, yeah, I think there's... you have to participate in those SIGs or someone here from here would need to participate in them to, to get that information. Yeah, so I can tell you one of the things that is on the roadmap for this year for the advocacy uh, SIG is getting a maybe it's a monthly uh, we meet bi-weekly and we're thinking of doing a monthly cadence where every sig has to come and report sort of the state of the union if you will mm -hmm. 
maybe using that as an example on this political free charge claim is not a good thing, but I think you get what I was meant by that. Uh, I see it so soon enough. It'll be modeled similarly to larger uh, things. I mean, I'd imagine this might've been a useful case for having a, a Jenkins board where, you know, the SIGs could all make reports to the board and the board keeping track <laughs> of being at re kind of rebroadcasting out to have all the other SIGs, what's going on between the SIGs, kind of like yeah. the summary report. Yeah, in another co uh, another community that I'm in, we have a monthly meeting that uh, at various times of the month, and I think it's each month they do it, four individual SIGs uh, are randomly chosen to come and they have to give updates at that meeting. And if they like can't make it, I think they get like two passes and then on the third pass, they have to go meet with the uh, with the steering committee and tell the steering committee why they aren't making it. That sounds similar to what we do at Apache. So maybe, so I'll, I'll bring that to see where we're at with that in the uh, advocacy SIG. Uh, I think we have a meeting next week. And, but what do we, how do we want, what do we think we can accomplish between now and the next meeting? Would it make sense to get an email out to both mailing lists sort of saying what we're working on? Well, I mean, we're, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, we're not done with personas yet. We still have to write some, go through and, and sort of fill out what kind of questions they're going to ask. So that's the, that, but we can say that's what we're working on. Yeah. yeah that, can, that makes sense. We're working on personas. Cause what I really want to make sure we're doing is, is it, it, we're being as transparent as can. We, everybody can come to this meeting. We pretty much, blast out when the meeting is done and where the recording is but nobody i think i don't want to say nobody some don't they don't use that type of channel so maybe we have to also add the emails monthly to say what we're doing thoughts that makes sense yep i think that makes sense i mean that especially made sense um or made sense up until yeah until you're um, adding the the uh, European friendly time um, for not for for asynchronous viewing because I, I I know myself I typically don't like to watch videos of meetings but I'll definitely read through the notes or things like that um, right. you know um, when it when it's things that are outside my time zone or something you know especially so uh, I I think it would definitely be useful especially for people who who might not have known what it is exactly this sig was about you know. Because uh, I'm sure there'll be some people who have opinions and want to help contribute. They just had no idea what was going on. Right. And, you know, yeah. Could be time constraints well, or they just are messy with email too. So uh, I, I see Liam typing and now it gave me something else. We should do, I think we should do an email. I think we should do a SIG blog post that sort of mirrors what we say in the email. And uh if nobody else wants to take that up i can take it up but i don't want again i don't want to keep all the i don't want to keep fire island to myself <laughs> for any of you those are what about ball fans uh i'm fine with uh you you taking that on i mean like i uh, just okay. sort of put the i'll put i'll create a google doc I'll share it out and like I'll plan to say we want to have this out by March 1st. Okay. That sounds so good. I, I mean, because that I'll, gives you, it gives us time to do, to uh, have that, uh, the first e uh, European time zone meeting as well. And yep. And, and, and then I'll sort of explain kind of how that meetings, those meetings feed into one another. So yep. people don't think they're separate work streams. That sounds good. Okay. Okay. You can assign that to me. Um, and then if people want to uh, the, look at the personas and uh, add questions that they think the, that kind of persona, each of the kind of personas will ask. Does anybody want to take that action item? 
I don't, I don't know if I know enough about the different personas, but I, I'll at least go through and add some myself. I, uh, this might be multiple person yeah, thing. The, let's, yeah, like I said, this is kind of a add questions to persona, add questions uh, that this persona's asked. And this is kind of an all, yeah, just. Agreed. Um, yeah, maybe I'll try to everyone... watch the Gitter channel too and see like what questions come in and if mm. we can map those questions too. Oh yeah, persona. great idea. Um, five, two, ten, each. anybody have anything else that gives us a little bit of stuff to go on yep. and what I'll be doing is for next week's uh, starting of the uh, EMEA meeting I will this is the stuff that I'm going to talk about so I'm going to basically fill that meeting with the notes we have from here and then anything that comes out of that I will fill that into our following days meeting. Okay, well, I mean, it gives us action items and gives yeah. us something to work on for the next week. Uh, Since you all probably fit under at least one of these personas, you could probably ask ask your own questions there too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. You know, like what's the deal with XML or things like that. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. Sounds like some Seinfeld stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> what's the deal? All right. Okay. Cool. Thank you, everyone. If nobody has any other things, we'll go ahead and give you back to like 20 minutes of your life. Awesome. Cool. Cool. See hey, you all everybody next week. Have, a, have a great Thanks, weekend. Everyone. Thanks. You too. Have a great all weekend, right. everyone.